anything comparable. An athlete in their first appearance as a professional on the biggest stage in their sport, dominating to such an extent that you knew without any doubt that you were watching an all-time great. Maybe Magic Johnson going for 42 points in Game 6 of the 1980 NBA Finals as a rookie. And perhaps there are a couple of other examples, but Tiger Woods at the 1997 Masters at 21 by 12 shots. That is on the short list of most significant victories in sports history. Mike Tirico takes us back 20 years ago. Before 14 majors, before four green jackets, before one green jacket, Tiger Woods had never even broken par in six career rounds at the Masters. However, in the days before, those closest to the then 21-year-old sensed that the 1997 Masters would be different. In practice rounds at home before we came up to Augusta National, he shot that famous 59 at Isleworth. The next day, of course, here we go again. We tee off on 10, and then once again, he gets up, he birdies 10. And then we drive over to the 11th tee. It's a par three over the water. He takes out an eight iron and flies it and makes a hole in one. And I look at him and I got in my cart and I drove back to my house. I was done. He went birdie hole in one after shooting 59. I'm like, well, this is, uh, this is ridiculous. In 95 and 96, he played practice rounds with the help of certain players, Fred Couples and Greg Norman and Jack Nicklaus. Experience in the golf course, he felt prepared to play. On the eve of the 97 Masters, Earl Woods ran into Tim Fincham and told the commissioner that Tiger's going to win the tournament. And Earl says, he looked at me like I was crazy. Despite Woods' three wins and 14 career starts as a pro on the PGA Tour, his previous two finishes at Augusta resulted in a tie for 41st and a missed cut. In round one, he played with six-time major winner and the defending champion, Nick Faldo. Tiger was a young kid who would have probably appreciated somebody who was really loose, but Faldo was the opposite. He was a little Hogan-like, you know? He could be intimidating without even trying to be. I've never tried gamesmanship on anybody. I would head down with because I don't go play. I did that with everybody I played with. Tiger Cup, man, the first nine holes kind of sucked a little bit, you know? I thought maybe, I wouldn't call it nerves, but maybe being a little bit unsettled. You didn't see much of each other in front. Now we're in the woods. We took 40. Not what he would have liked, a big 40. Walking from 9 uh, green to 10 T, it was like Superman putting on his cape. He was really angry. You could see it on his face. And I had seen Tiger that way several times, especially in U.S. Amateur Championships. He played much better when he was angry. Woods made his first birdie of the day at the 10th hole. After a par on 11, he hit his tee shot over the green on the par 3 12th. He was looking at a bogey, and another bogey at that point would have been too much to recover from in terms of overall score. Bump and run. How good is this? Oh, birdie. Tony chipped off the back at 12, and that was basically the, the start of his career. And I say jokingly, from there on, we didn't see him for dust for about the next 12 years. Four birdies and an eagle on the second nine resulted in a 30. Ten shots better than his first nine. The overall score of 70 put Tiger in fourth place. One shot behind Paul Azinger, who he played with in round two. He's playing with another former major champion, another person who could be intimidating to him. Uh, not intimidated one bit. For me, he was just another player. I still had never seen Tiger hit a shot in my life. So I said, I'm going to watch this shot. And when he hit it, I looked at my caddy and I just was like, holy <laughs> He's the best golfer in the world and he's 21 years old. And I think that's unbelievable. As Paul described, the Tiger shots carried extra integrity. He was so impressed. It was like watching Bob Beeman, you know, jump 29 feet. It was something transcendent athletically. On the first nine of round two, Wood shot 34, six shots better than the day before. After reaching the par 5 13th with an eight iron, he had an eagle putt to take the lead. Let the record show a little after 5.30 on this Friday, April 11th. Tiger takes the lead for the first time ever at the Masters. I do remember talking to Earl afterwards. 
he did say that once Tiger took the lead, that he would expand it. That's the point where he predicted that if it was over. And we talk about a 27 hole stretch to treasure. There's more to it than getting up a long way around here. I have a lot more experience now in, uh, in major championship golf than he has. Whether he was throwing down a gauntlet or not, Tiger took it that way. Tiger, from a young age, would use anything that was could be perceived as a slight, even if it wasn't meant as a slice, as fuel. I was trying to get to number one in the world, and he was obviously not ranked, and, and I felt, well, I've got some experience over him at least, but we weren't ready. I don't think the world was quite aware of what was to transpire. He didn't really have a weakness. He hit the ball tremendous distances. He had great accuracy. He putted really well. His short game was phenomenal. Butch, as they were leaving the putting green uh, to go to the first tee on Saturday morning, said, show Colin Montgomery who you are. And Tiger said, don't worry. I got it. I will. He was hitting the ball 320. And I was stuck at 270, which was, which was OK, 97. But it was 50 yards behind him. And there's an awe about him that I witnessed that round of golf I played with that I hadn't seen before. Then I realized something was awry. Something was different with this fella. Here it is. Look out. There's no chance, humanly possible, that Tiger Woods is going to lose this tournament. He's nine shots clear. And I'm sure that'll be higher tomorrow. Having witnessed what I just witnessed, it was deflating. It was deflating for everybody watching it. <laughs> 65, Tiger Woods. Masters mark for the largest lead for three rounds. Woods needed a final round 69 to break Jack Nicklaus and Raymond Floyd's 72-hole scoring record of 271. His opponents have never been people. His opponents have always been history. He always wanted to break every record. He always wanted to do things that had never been done. Tiger chasing a kind of perfection that really has yet to be defined. When I stepped on 17T, I just kind of thought about how many under I was. And I saw a scoreboard, I saw I was 18. And I thought, yeah, if I part the last two holes, I could have it. There it is. That fist pump, it wasn't one of them things like the way I kicked that butt today. It was the fist pump where I have a ride. I had tears in my eyes. He let all of his emotions, which he was very good at keeping inside. So when Earl and he embraced, he kind of let it all out. He hugged Earl after his U.S. Amateur victories, but this one was something special. They'd been pointing towards it for a long time. The thing that always struck me was the almost magical way that he would win at 1997 masters he was just magic that whole week to do it in the, the fashion that i did it that's just something you never, you never really dream of it's kind of nice that it actually became a reality tiger because he knew he had a gift early on his goal was to make history to have an impact and the greatest impact he could have was winning the masters